everything about an organization is different. So there isn't a cookie cutter answer to the question, right? But what organizations can do and what we've seen, um, you know, best practices for leaders to do is really first understand their organization. Who is their customer base, right? Who are their employees? What are their demographics and representation look like across the board? Um, also processes, all of these very foundational business practices is important for our leaders to really know about, but really know about, not just say, oh, I know I have 10% African-Americans in my area, you know, and this, the, not the numbers, but know about meaning know your people. Are they opening those lines of communication with their workforce and their customers? Is there a line of communication open? So really being more humanistic about the way that they do their work. Uh, leaders are having to do that even more now intentionally even now more with the hybrid workplace atmosphere, if um, that disconnect of that in-person uh, dynamic that happens is no longer here, we're now Zooming um, and doing you know, Google Meets and things like that. So the intentionality to be more relational is really probably one of the biggest steps that leaders can start to do. Yeah, I mean, as you say, every company is different. Yeah. Um, it's like every person is different, but... Um, I guess when you're talking about the culture of an organization, ultimately it is the sum of the people within it. So Correct. exactly as you say, you know, if there's a problem with it, listen to the people. <laughs> Sometimes it goes back, back to these very simplistic, like foundational ways of just being people to people, right? Like, yeah. and relationship building. It really, it, it comes back to just how easy it is, but yet how hard it is for us to do it at times, um, especially in a workplace setting. So it's, yeah, it, sometimes it's just going back to the basics or they want the, give me the quick fix model that'll fix this, right? Or what are the three steps that I need to do to make this better? Sometimes there is no model. There is no steps. There's just you being a human. Important, I think, for leaders to try and avoid that sort of one size fits all approach because yes, there's really no such thing as there. there never has been. <laughs> there never has been. I don't know how we keep thinking there is. There yeah. really never has been. And the world is changing so fast. And again, the whole multiculturalism of our workplace, it's huge. I think I saw the other day some data points where they showed the younger generation like a, a really very simplistic chart of the Caucasian, here in the US, again, I apologize, I wish I, I should do more research in the UK, uh, but here in the US, like that the Caucasian younger populations now at 40% and then the rest of it is multicultural, right? There, the Hispanics, Latin, now there's a mix. Um, there's these, you know, interracial relationships. I mean, yes, it's just changing, which is a beautiful, if we change our perspectives, it can be a beautiful, gathering a mosaic of perspective experiences that can just be that much more informative of the way the organization should be running. But according to the research in today's age, a leader needs to be a multi um, lens leader, meaning they need to look at any sort of obstacle, uh, concern, problem that happens from multiple lenses and not be so focused on a, a just a uni lens way of thinking, right? So they now have to be very open in the way that they, they look at situations. So if it's from a human centric uh, lens, then look at the human side. If it's from a process, then look at the process side. And that's hard to do, right? It's hard to be able to look at everything quickly because money's on the table. Of course, I understand that, right? Money's on the table. So we need to make a decision like now, um, but it is, if that time is taken, they will save time and money. So I'm trying to break the, um, I don't want to call it a stigma, or maybe it's just the, the idea that we need to, again, be reactive versus be um, intentional and really step back and, and think about what we're doing as an organization. So the research says taking time as a leader when making decisions will create better outcomes. What do you think is the biggest mistake that a leader can make? I think there's a couple of big mistakes that leaders can make. Um, I think is one we've talked about at this, this at our time together is fighting the change, right? So trying to go back to the way it used to be, or this is how we used to do it. So having that, that not advocating for change, 
um, it could be very detrimental to the leader as well as the organization. The research says that we've seen that um, just in different examples uh, that have occurred with organizations. So um, being able to really embrace the change and all the whether ickiness or not ickiness that comes with change, um, being able to do that. So if they're not doing that, one mistake for sure. Another is not listening to their organization and to their own people. Um, not listening to, yes, their gripes and complaints and also their ideas and innovative um, ways of thinking and ideation that comes from just their workforce. It's about the collaborative efforts of seeing a team come together them lead in their them bring their own leadership in their own way right to uh, to bring the project or the the initiative to its full potential and then executing and then celebrating right so my the best leadership experience is actually seeing that in action because yes the leader has a place in it but then it's it's giving the empowerment to the individuals to also lead in whatever expertise they're in. And so everybody's leading and everybody's working and collaborating. There's just a synergy and you can even feel it in a room when you're around these kinds of groups, right? Where there's just, it's just going and flowing and it's vibrant and um, you hear people challenging each other always, you know, with respect and dignity um, and then ideas coming out and then ultimately coming up with a solution, executing and then celebrating. That is the best leadership experience I've experienced. And I've been, um, I've had the privilege of being part of some teams like uh, that have gone through that. So I know what it feels like. And yeah, to be able to be part of that is ultimate, right?